and peace be unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus the Christ. This is the day that the Lord hath made and he has commanded us to rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. The Lord has allowed us to be here and connect together one more time. We welcome you into the sacred place that we call sanctuary, where God is exalted, the devil is defeated, and we have the victory. We thank you so much for joining us for our Wednesday night recharge. I am so grateful unto God for all that he has done for me, for what he is doing for me and everything that he is going to do for me. God has been good to me. I can testify to that every day. God has been mighty, mighty good to me. Down through the years, God's been good to me. Has he been good to you? Has the Lord made a way for you? Has God opened doors for you? Right. Oh my, my, God is. He's still in the miracle working business. God is still healing. He is still delivering and God is still setting the captive free. We thank you so much for your prayers. Your prayers mean so much. We thank you for your support, for your kind words of encouragement. We thank you for your financial sacrifices that you help us to keep doing what it is that we are doing in this part of the vineyard. You know, we're in the month of February and they have delegated and relegated to us February as Black History Month. And so what I want to say right now is that I want to celebrate you. We celebrate you for who you are. We celebrate you for yet being a survivor in times like this. Your history matters. God has brought you from a mighty, mighty long way. And for that, we celebrate you. We celebrate you for all of your many accomplishments and that you are still being blessed by God every day. Can I give you a little secret? The Lord is blessing me right now. He's blessing you right now. We want to pray with you because we realize that many of us are dealing with certain things, circumstances, dilemmas, uh, just having to make critical decisions in times like these. And we want to pray with you because we believe that prayer works. We believe that prayer changes everything. So if you're standing in the need of prayer, I want you to put your name in the comments, put the names of the people that you need for us to pray for, and my faith will connect with your faith. And where two or three agree as in touching anything that we ask, it shall be done unto us. Do you believe that? Do you believe in the power of prayer? If you believe in the power of prayer, I want you to type that in the comments. Prayer changes everything. Oh God, yes Lord, prayer changes everything. And somebody, somebody somewhere is standing in the need of prayer right now. And we command you right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, we command you to be healed, be delivered, and be set free. Over here in our church, we have declared that this is the year of the open door, that this is a year of divine favor over our lives and the year of the open door. And we shall, we shall walk through into what God has called us to do. And tonight I, I want to encourage you as people of God, I want to encourage you on tonight. I want you to know that 
you got to keep on knocking at that door. And you ought to start knocking right now. Knock as if you're standing at the door that is getting ready to open for you. Hey, man, I want you to knock on that door. Continue to knock at the door. And I believe, I personally believe that God is encouraging many of us who have shelved prayer requests. Yeah, some stuff that you might have put on the back burner. But the Lord is saying, he's saying it's time for you to recall that prayer. It's time to knock again. And I want you to type that in the comments right now. Knock again. It's time for us to knock again at that door. Why, Pastor? Because your prayer may be a, about a personal need or a personal promise from God. Or, or your prayer may be a prayer on behalf of somebody else, somebody who you love, somebody who you are connected to. But I want us to be assured that your continued prayer when it is an assignment from God, it is going to result in a great harvest. And God is, he is releasing faith for your answer. Knock, you gotta knock, knock. It is time for us to release the sound of prayer. I don't want you to type that in the comments, please. I appreciate you helping me through here to type that in the comments, to get this in the atmosphere. I want you to type that. It's time to release the sound of prayer. And this is what Jesus said of prayer in Luke chapter 11, verse number nine. So I say to you, ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you will find Knock, and it will be open to you. Knock, and it will be open to you. Knock, and it will be open unto you. You got to ask and keep on asking. Seek and keep on seeking. Knock, and keep on knocking. And so here we are. We see in this particular verse that we begin by asking and you continue to ask and when you are hungry and and you seek you seek to seek is to be active it means that i am moving towards god and i am looking for god to answer my prayer i'm expecting god to answer my Prayer. And I need somebody to declare that out loud. I want you to type that in the comments with confidence. I am expecting God to answer my prayer. And we see that finally, the final instruction of that scripture is that we begin to knock. And you are now making a noise. When you knock, it means that I'm making a noise to get attention. So now I am calling out. I'm asking, I'm seeking, and I'm knocking all at the same time because now my desire has reached its fullness and that need expressed in fervent prayer gives birth to the promises of God. Oh my, the promises of God are still yay and amen. And so tonight I want to talk about four reasons that knocking prayer is powerful. Knocking prayer. Four reasons that knocking prayer is possible and it's powerful because we know that God is willing and God is willing, hear me clearly, God is willing, and even right now at this moment, heaven is open. Oh, my. So then why does God prescribe a type of prayer where we approach heaven as though a door 
stands between us and the Father who has our answer. So the first thing I want to tell you is that knocking in prayer demonstrates your faith. I don't want you to type that. Number one, please. Knocking in prayer demonstrates your faith. And so our knocking brings God pleasure. It is the audacity of a child who, who continues to ask of a parent. And so we are confident of our father's willingness to answer. And so we persist in prayer. Hebrews 11 and 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And so we know that there is no reluctance on God's part. And so we are assured that heaven is open to us right now. And when we exemplify knocking prayer, knocking prayer, you are continuously calling out to the Father for his answer. And you are responding, hear this, in obedience to him. And so in the meantime, God is rejoicing in your declaration of his faithfulness and the trial of your faith, the trial of your faith, the trying of your faith will come forth as gold. And somebody needed to hear what I just said. The trying of your faith will come forth as gold. The second thing I want to tell you is that knocking in prayer is a powerful act of warfare. I want you to type that, please. Knocking in prayer is a powerful act of warfare. And so we see this. I'm reminded of Daniel. Daniel, he's a man in the Bible. Daniel was persistent. In prayer. So he asked, he sought, he knocked, and he continued praying and fasting. And the Bible records for us in Daniel chapter 10 that the angel eventually showed up. And watch what the angel says to Daniel. It says, Daniel, God began to answer your prayers from the moment that you started praying. Oh, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Somebody need to hear that right now. I said, yeah. God began to answer your prayer the moment that you started praying. He's answering your prayer right now. God is answering your prayer right now. Oh, God. Oh, and Daniel didn't even know that as soon as he began to pray, God was already putting his answer together. But behind the scene, yeah, it's behind the scene. Behind the scene, there was a spiritual warfare taking place on an immense scale. And just as Daniel's prayer did, your persistence in prayer has power to overcome every enemy. Your persistent knocking in prayer will bring strongholds down. So you got to be persistent in your knocking. I want you to type that in the comments, please. Be persistent in your knocking. Oh, God, I know this is Wednesday night Bible study, but I really felt like taking off running because while I'm praying, God is behind the scenes. He's working it out right now. He's working it out right now. I said he's working it out right now. Glory be to God. The third thing I want to tell you is that knocking in prayer obtains the answer. Would you type that, please? Knocking in prayer obtains the answer. And so I'm going to continue with Daniel's story because Daniel's example reminds us that every knock 
with every knock that you make, something is happening. Oh, my God. Yes, Lord. Every time you knock at the door, something is happening. Power. What's happening, Pastor? Power is being released. The angels are at work. And the answer to our prayer may not physically manifest at the moment, but your prayer request is in motion. Glory be to God. I'm telling you right now, what you have been praying for, it's in motion. Your prayer, the answer to your prayer is in motion right now. And your insistent prayer is what fuels the process. Yes, if you keep on praying, it's going to fuel the process. Your knocking in prayer accesses the resources of heaven. Oh, God. Oh, so you got to consider, consider what I'm telling you right now. I said that your knocking in prayer accesses the resources of heaven. So this is what I need you to think about. You have to consider the nature of the door of the house that you are knocking on. Oh, God, you're knocking on heaven's door. Glory be to God. And I hear the Lord telling us tonight we need to expect kingdom-sized answers. Glory be to God. Oh, my, my, my. I said expect kingdom-sized answers. I'm expecting kingdom-sized answers. Would you type that in the comments if you believe that for yourself even now? I'm expecting kingdom-sized blessings. Now unto him who's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worked in us. Can I tell you, expect a kingdom-sized blessing if you keep on knocking at that door. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. The fourth thing I want to tell you, my last point on tonight is that as you knock in prayer, Justice is being released. Mm, I want you to put that in your comments, please. As you knock in prayer, justice is being released. And somebody watching me right now, somebody listening to me right now, you need justice in the situation that you're dealing with right now. And so as you continue to knock in prayer, hear what I'm telling you. Justice is being released release. And there was a time in the Bible when Jesus told a parable about the persistent widow and the corrupt judge. And when that woman kept on pursuing him for justice, watch what the judge says. The judge says, because this woman keeps bothering me, I'm going to answer her. Because she bothered me so much, I got to give her an answer. And what are we talking about, preacher? Well, Jesus, Jesus was illustrating his point that he should keep on praying. We got to keep on praying and never give up. And he then concentrated on the corrupt judge and he considered us to look at that as how our heavenly father looks at it. And in Luke chapter 18, he says, I will, when will I not give you? Will God not bring about the justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? Mm. So we got to cry out to God day and night. Keep knocking at that door. Oh my, because we need some justice. Yes, we need justice. Justice is being released on your behalf even now. We need justice. Justice is needed when wrongdoing has been done against us or other people who we are praying for. We need justice. We need justice when we have been robbed of what is rightfully ours. We need justice 
when there has been inequality in a situation. We need justice when you're dealing with a corrupt system. We need justice. What the enemy meant for evil, God is going to turn it around for your good because we need justice. We need justice. It may have been through the attitudes or actions or decisions of other people. We need justice. It may be generational issues. We need justice. It may have been a spiritual attack that has come against you. We need justice. Mm, and this is the grace of God that Jesus makes obtaining justice from God simple. We just have to follow his instructions. Follow what Jesus is asking us to do. We got to know that God is willing. You got to believe in your heart that God is, he's good, and God is, he's kind. You got to see God as, as the righteous judge who releases justice on your behalf. And let me say it to you again. God is releasing justice on your behalf. And all while you're doing this in the midst of that, you got to keep on lifting up your voice and crying out to God. Don't stop crying out to God. You can't wait till the battle is over. You got to keep on shouting even right now. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you that God is, God is reviving us in the knocking. And we know that when God calls us to a certain action, he anoints us for that obedience. So if you feel as though you have lost the capacity to pray, you got to lift up your hands right where you are even now because just when you thought you were at your last gasp, you got to go again to the throne of grace because you are being revived right now. I'm telling you what I'm telling you what God is telling me to tell you. It's time to knock again. Knock at that door. Because something is behind that door and it's getting ready to open for you. I believe that. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Oh, glory. I want you to knock, knock right now as if the door is about to open for you. What's behind that door? Peace is behind that door. A miracle is behind that door. Your breakthrough is behind that door. Deliverance is behind that door. What I'm saying to you tonight, that whatever you have been praying for, I need you to knock at that door. It's if whatever your prayer request has been, it's behind the door. You got to knock right now as if that door is being open to you. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for your amazing power and your work in our lives. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy and for your blessings over our lives. We thank you that you are able to bring hope through every tough time in our life. You're giving us strength. You're strengthening us even now for your purpose. We thank you for your great love and your care. God, we, we thank you for your mercy and for your grace. We thank you that you are always with us and you will never leave us. Oh God, we thank you for your 
incredible sacrifice so that we might have freedom and life. Help us, God, to set our eyes and our hearts on you afresh. Renew our spirits. Fill us right now, God, with your peace and joy. And we thank you for answering our prayers. We love you and we need you this day and every day. We give you praise right now and thanksgiving for you alone are worthy. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen and thank God. To God be the glory for the things that he has done. We give him glory even now because we're knocking at the door and there's something at that door that's waiting for you. God wants to bless you. He wants to give you the desires of your heart. We thank you so much for connecting with us on this evening. We thank you for your continued support and your prayers. Now remember that somebody is praying for you. And just in case you hadn't heard it today, we love you and we need you to survive. I want to invite you to join us on Sunday morning for our first Sunday of the month. And we have communion. So Sunday will be communion Sunday. And we're always excited because the blood, the blood still works. It reaches to the highest mountain. It flows through the lowest valley. The blood will never lose its power. So we'd be so excited that you would join us for our communion service on this Sunday. Oh God, I'm excited even now. Oh God. And if the Lord delays his coming, we'll be so delightedly to see you real soon. But until the next time, may the Lord watch between me and thee while we are yet absent one from another. And don't you forget to remember that you are important. Yes, you are important and don't let anybody tell you anything differently. You matter. You matter. And somebody loves you and somebody needs you and somebody is counting on you. Oh God, I, I believe that I speak that over your life in the mighty name of Jesus. But until the next time, we hope to see you real soon. And it is our prayer that the glory of the Lord be revealed in you. In Jesus' name, amen.